What's up guys, we are back with more Wild Rift Esports today and we will finally be finishing off this absolutely crazy best of five. If you missed the first four games of this, as always, they will be put in the top right corner of this video in a little card annotation. So feel free to check out those videos before this one. But without further ado, let's just jump in straight into the draft of game five. The last game here that will decide the winner of the Malaysian Icon Series preseason. Is it gonna be Berjaya Dragons or is it gonna be Geek Fan? And listen, as we know, Berjaya Dragons stomped Geek Fan twice in a row. Now Geek Fan stomped Berjaya Dragons twice in a row. Are they gonna get the reverse sweep? One of the key picks was the Lux support, and she is actually banned out this time by BJD along with an Olaf ban. Meanwhile, Akali and Alistair banned super standard by Geek Fan. First pick Brom, I really love to see that. I think he is absolutely insane, especially with the Alistair um, banned away. Meanwhile, Camille and Wukong, again, high priority put on that Wukong jungle. I think GF is very happy with that one. Ooh, they don't get the Lux, so they just go for the Seraphine. All right, all right, I like it. Let me just pause real quick because we have a Yasuo pick as well, a Zaya pick once again, an Orianna in the mid lane, and a Jarvan in the jungle. So honestly, Berjaya Dragons looking incredibly strong here. Keep in mind, this is a Baron lane Yasuo, okay? Not a mid lane Yasuo because we already have the Orianna as well. Meanwhile, we have that Gragas in the mid lane and a Misfortune to combo with that Seraphine. Very beautiful ultimate combos of, of course coming from that bottom lane of a Geek Fam already. This should be really exciting. Now keep in mind this is a game five. Usually pro teams play very defensive during that game five, okay? Because it is just really risky. You don't wanna you don't wanna just throw away a whole week worth of tournaments or even longer. I'm not sure how long this preseason was. Um, just to just just in the last game, right? You don't want to overaggress, but BJD is saying no to my words and they will still invade. Um, but this is just the standard little red buff swap that both of these teams have been doing. Again, I think this is this is kind of like an AOV Mobile Legends classic thing. This is not something you see in League of Legends esports often. Uh, this is just something mobile MOBA players have in their blood at this point. I'm telling you, man. In every other mobile MOBA, you always swap these buffs. It's just a standard thing to do. Um, well, actually, I'm not sure about Mobile Legends, but I'm sure there were uh, metas where you would do that. And seems like both junglers are successful in it. However, uh, no, never mind. Both junglers getting, uh, both teams getting the Wraith camp, the, excuse me, the Raptor camp, of course what it was reworked into already like eight years ago. I'm just a boomer, guys, okay? It used to be little ghosts, little wraiths. That's why I keep calling that uh, that sometimes before they turn it into chicken. But no chicken, however, a monkey ganking the mid lane. Not able to get that Orianna, though. Did I mute? Yes, sir. Oh, we gotta make sure. Let me just, let me just check if all the technical stuff is on point. Yes, sir. We did not mess up anything. You know, I'm a little bit... We're talking about that monkey. I have a little bit of monkey blood in me as well. Unfortunately, not the good kind of monkey blood. The monkey blood that makes me dumb, not the Goku monkey blood that makes me strong. I, I am strong though, don't worry guys, okay? So hey, you better watch out. <clears throat> anyway, we have Zaya. We have that classic little lane swap. Ooh, hold up. We have a complete little uh, dual lane swap, okay? We had Zaya in the top lane against Camille, but we had a Yasuo Braum dual lane in the bottom lane. Um, well, they quickly want to swap that up again. I guess they were trying to predict the lane swap from uh, GF here, but weren't able to, so they have to, they, they miss a couple minions. Whenever you mess up a lane swap like that, you miss a couple minions, okay? You can see Camille pushed the wave into the tower and the Yasuo ended up missing a couple of those minions, which is of course not good. Um, especially the experience, you know? The gold, you know, it, it, is, it is rough to lose that, but especially the experience. As soon as the enemy hits that level five before you, they can just dive onto you and it is gonna look dangerous and you can exactly see that was the case. However, Yasuo hit level 5, so he should be fine now. Camille shouldn't be able to do anything too nasty to him. 
Uh, the Braum, beautiful shield usage there, blocks a lot of the damage from Seraphine, but still takes a big chunk here. Definitely Seraphine is one of the stronger laning champions for that support position. She can really uh, just poke you out very hard. However, Jarvan recognizes that and wants to go for a cheeky little lane gank. This is a very nice gank you can do if the bot lane bushes aren't warded. They have no clue, look. They're pretty overextended. Ooh, are they gonna move in? Yeah, boy. Oh, but he is a little bit not patient enough. He should have waited a little bit longer. Um, because I think the Brom could have baited there. But the gank ends up failing. Lots of time wasted in the end. Meanwhile, the Wukong was just farming. He's a happy little monkey. Uh, he's building towards that Yomu's Ghost Blade. Meanwhile, the Jarvan is going a little bit more supportive with that Black Cleaver build. Which uh, is something that we see by both these champs very often. Um, both going for their standard builds. I mean, we have seen Wukong's going for a Black Cleaver first as well. It's also a little bit more of a supportive playstyle, but Wukong is more of an assassin than uh, Jarvan is, right? Jarvan is really uh, very much of a little cutlord supportive jungler. It is what it is. It's sad. He's a cool champ, but uh, you will have to um, suck it up, you know? and act as a secondary support, especially in the mid and late game. Because that's of course where his damage falls off. Zaya going first item, Mortal Reminder. I think we're all glad that that item got nerfed. Pa Phantom Dancer first on Yasuo. This is something we very rarely see in esports. Usually we see either the full aggressive static shift first build or the more utility focused, also a lot of damage though, Ghost Blade, uh, not Ghost Blade, Blade of the Rune King built first. Uh, Phantom Dancer is a little bit of a mixture, you know. It's a very defensive little crit item. Um, of course, same stats as Static Shift pretty much, but has the shield, which is very nice. Does he need the shield? I'm not sure. The enemies do have a lot of burst though, so it is always nice to have. We have uh, that Ocean Dragon spawned and ready to be taken down. But both teams playing again, this is the game five phenomenon, guys. It is not uh, it is not a joke that I always say this, but whenever we have a game five, you know, you might be excited. You're like, ooh, last game, they're gonna play. Oh, it's gonna go balls to the walls. You know, it's gonna be so close. It's the deciding game, but nope, they will just play very defensive. But then usually we have some crazy late game team fights that end up being pretty close because both teams just farm up until the mid and late game and no one really gets ahead, you know? As you can see, the gold is dead even. It is 100 gold advantage for Geek Fam, you know? Like two last hits, my guys. Anyway, Oriana gets caught, already flashed. I think she will definitely drop here. One more auto attack. Nope, the ignite is enough by Gragas to finish her off. Beautiful ult by Gragas, engage that team fight. And we have the Wukong takes down the Jarvan as well. And it is honestly a very nice victory here for Geek Fan. Those two kills are already plenty to be uh, happy about. However, they will also get that Ocean Dragon, which is very, very nice. Now, recently on my live stream, I have been. Um, there was a small little discussion for a couple of minutes of what is the weakest dragon in Wild Rift actually. And some people were saying that Riot actually publicized statistics and they said that the Ocean Dragon is the weakest. I don't agree. I think Ocean Dragon, especially the higher the ranks go, the more effective it gets because you can really just completely win the lane after you get an early Ocean Dragon. So I think an early, like first Dragon Ocean Dragon is so good for the laning phase um, because th this laning phase still hasn't stopped. We will still see the 1v1 between Yasuo and Camille and if the Yasuo can poke her out a little bit, she will just be able to life steal back up, you know? That Omni Vamp, of course, is gonna be very useful for her. Gonna be really good for the Wukong, for the Misfortune, for the Gragas as well, and even for the Seraphine. So honestly, they can be very happy with that. I think uh, Mountain Dragon is the weakest one. And yeah, Riot actually in their statistics saying that Cloud Drake has the most impact, which um, yeah, phew, the Oriana gets caught again. This is beautiful gameplay by Gragas. It is not easy to hit these ults at max range. And that was really max range where it could still hit her, uh, knock her into the tower. But yeah, they're actually saying Cloud Drake is the strongest one. Now the thing about that is, 
Cloud Drake is definitely strong because you get a lot of move speed, but what it does, it essentially makes rotating easier, right? Because you just run faster, you can be everywhere faster, which of course in a solo queue environment where people tend to rotate late is very strong. I still think um, based on my experience and based on what everyone would probably agree with in higher elos, uh, that Infernal is the best one. For sure. But yeah, Mountain probably the weakest one, man. Mountain is still pretty good though. Don't don't worry guys. It's still all these dragons are a little bit broken. I think they should nerf most of them. We have Camille getting a little bit caught, exhausted by the Yasuo. I forgot to mention that he brought exhaust and it seems like it will result in a kill. Lots of ultimates committed though. Three ults committed for that kill and the Wukong recognizes that. So he goes back in, he can go with his second ult. Beautiful um, Windwall by the Yasuo though. Blocks any form of damage by the Misfortune. She of course wanted to ult there but wasn't able to. As soon as that uh, Yasuo Windwall comes out and very unfortunate, unfortunate by the Seraphine because she ended up flashing in and all things straight into that Windwall. A little bit of a clowny play, you know, but hey, that, that's what we love to see. And still, victory for Geek Fan because they end up getting the top lane tower. The Virginia Dragons got poked too hard. They wasted too many ultimates on that kill. Again, I keep saying that. Sometimes it is not worth to get a kill. <laughs> If you, if you end up spending three ultimates, poo, the enemies will just roll over you. And as a result of that, we have Yasuo getting caught as well in the top lane after his tower got dropped. And honestly, a very good game out of Geek Fan here. Are they gonna get the reverse sweep? It certainly looks that way so far. Again, I keep telling you, um, it is really difficult to deal with your nerves at game five especially after playing a tournament for a whole day. Uh, that is exactly what Berjaya Dragons is dealing with in this game here. And it seems like, so far, it is enough for Geek Fan. Also, they're playing really well to uh, edge out this victory. At least that is the trend so far. We also have a Harmonic Echo first item coming out by that Camille. Uh, excuse me, not by the Camille. I hope not by the Camille. Uh, by the, what's it called? Seraphine. Now, not Ardent Sensor, that's a little bit surprising, you know, but keep in mind she has a Misfortune as a Marksman, which definitely, you know, loves the Ardent Sensor buff, but not as important as if you're playing with a Jinx, for example, uh, or a Kai'Sa, because Misfortune is gonna still rely on her ultimate for a lot of that teamfight damage. Now, we have the Mountain Dragon, the weakest dragon, spawning. Let's see. Um, if they will be able to secure it again here, Geek Fan. They are looking at a 1000 gold lead only. That's not that big of a deal because actually, Berjaya Dragons, while I was rambling on about uh, the Ardent Sensor versus Harmonic Echo, they were able to get two towers. So they are able to bring back a little bit, uh, bring themselves back into this game a little bit. Very aggressive build by Gragas. I love it. Infinity Orb into that Rabadon's Death Cap. Super good build. In my opinion, I don't think you need that Leandris first. I don't think you need that Lich Bane second. Just go full burst. It's going to have so much AoE damage. And you will still one-shot. Beautiful Misfortune ult. Lays down a lot of damage, however, only onto that Braum and the Jarvan. So that results in a, probably a lost team fight. And uh, Berjaya Dragons also had the positional advantage. So they were able to secure the Mountain Drake. As you can see, they actually won the team fight. Very well done. The Misfortune ult only hitting two, uh, only two tanks, and she was a little bit split away. It was just not a good position for uh, GF to fight that. Um, I believe that Gragas wasn't there either, so it just wasn't. Um, it was just a huge mispositioning, and Brigada Dragons recognizing that and beautifully uh, abusing it, getting themselves a dragon and a kill. And pretty much bringing back the gold to about equal, like 300 gold lead, we don't have to talk about that. That is nothing, that is less than 1% quick maths at this point, which is not going to do anything. It is not even a full, not even a small item because it's, it's uh, distributed among multiple members of Geek Fan. Camille is going to ult this Yasuo, I think he's going to die. Unless, look at this Jarvan, he's coming. 
Ooh, very well done. Now, that is actually a good play by Yasuo to escape, but also a good play by GF there, by the two GF members. Because if that Camille ulted him, she would have died. Hey, the, the, the Berjaya Dragons, the rest of the squad, was already following up. Now, she recognized that early enough and just decided to walk away, which resulted in a pretty funny little exchange there because they just walked away from the Yasuo, didn't even, didn't even bother all attacking him. But uh, yeah, very smart. They saw, they felt the presence, they smelt, they, they smelt the Virgin Dragons coming in, you know. But now we have a little bit of a fight and a teleport going bot lane. I think this is going to be a Gragas onto that Yasu. He's probably going to get ulted and he gets killed. Bottom right, you can see it on your screen right now. And we have a huge team fight breaking out though. Virgin Dragons instantly recognizes it is a 5v3 in a 4v3 excuse me in the middle lane so they instantly engage they manage to get the Wukong killed which is the jungler dead which means they will instantly go onto that uh, Baron and of course the MF ended up dying as well but while I'm saying that we have a crazy bot lane push coming in by Gragas and Camille and they actually end up securing the bot lane tower and it seems like they want to end never mind they will back out the Orianna is enough to uh, defend this but of course the Baron Nasher buff going over to Berjaya Dragons now the thing about this is let's see let's analyze is this worth for who is it worth uh, Berjaya Dragons got two kills they got a Baron buff but Geek Fam got I believe two towers I don't think the tier 2 tower bot was down they got one kill and they got one of the towers was a tier 3 tower so they have uh, super minions secured in that bottom lane now what depends on like it, it all depends whether this was worth is is um if Berjaya dragons is gonna secure a tier three towers uh, for themselves with this bear buff are they going to probably not however they will probably knock down all the tier two towers um that are remaining for geek fam and they will most likely secure the cloud drake so they will be looking at a pretty good lead honestly gold lead in the end very well worth however later down the line in five to ten minutes if they still cannot knock down that tier three tower for themselves then they are sitting at a disadvantage all right let's see how this plays out though let's see if my prediction will be right if they will get all these tier two towers i believe they should be able to you can see yasuo already pushing mid they will at least get the mid lane tower as well and it seems like they're trying to fake a little threat there onto the tier 3 tower but i don't think they can get that one unless uh, gf completely misplays but now yasuo is actually misplaying he gets caught completely and i think this will oh but yeah now nah, i see the mf the mf stage she can ult and she clears out the um the wave but there's a huge team fight oriana gets dropped the zaya flashes in onto the mf finishes her off and it is so far a three for three if we count the yasuo as well it is only a three for two never mind so and it seems like it will be a four for two in favor of gf because they will get no it was a four for three excuse me am i stupid no it was a three for three i am stupid guys i'm trying my best guys <laughs> listen man don't don't bully me okay it's, it's fine anyway it was a three for three the the jarvan didn't end up dying however gf actually secures the dragon and honestly just huge mistake by virgin dragons they had the power to get three tier 2 towers and a dragon and they botched it they only ended up getting one tier 2 tower they ended up overextending for the tier 3 tower only got half of it so that was not worth and they lose uh four for uh three for three team fight which is a loss yes because you have a baron buff and you literally just waste the baron buff on three members and by the time the others re these three members respawn the other two lost the baron buff as well which is exactly what we're seeing here so it was not worth and on top of that they lost a dragon as well so geek fam looking very good and they are able to finish off that marksman that was hard carrying the team fight last a uh, couple uh, like literally a minute ago they ended up dropping that zaya and look at this gragas positioning he is going deep did so much damage will probably die no does not end up dying the oriana botches her combo misses the qw onto that gragas misses the ult only hits like one person and we have a huge bottom lane in the 
uh, huge plasma lane wave pushing onto that Nexus is actually at half health, okay? So they had to instantly uh, go back and defend that. Three members dying for none. So Geek Fam looking so good here after that Baron that uh, they lost. And now three people still dead. So this will be an absolutely free Baron. Oriana ult will be up very soon though. But I don't think she can even move close to it to even attempt that steal. Yes, huge advantage now for Geek Fan. This seems to be a reverse sweep. Now again, look at the gold. It really doesn't matter to talk about that, but it is a 1.3k gold lead for Berjaya Dragon still. Uh, it's not really a lead because it's so such a small, minuscule lead, but it's still, I'm just trying to say that the game is still very even in terms of um, gold, in terms of itemization. But if the Yasuo just gets caught once again, the Seraphine doing work with those ultimates, man, I'm telling you, Seems like GF got stumped twice with a tank support and all they needed was a ranged support that can catch out people. They had the Lux, the Lux got banned uh, after two dominating victories and now we have Seraphine again shining on that pig. Seems like GF Nyx is just a very good uh, mage support player and uh, yeah, feels seems to be at home at these range support uh, picks. Of course, there was still Jenna available, and with that being said, uh, they get the victory, man. That was actually very well played. Seraphine picked in esports. That is crazy. That is super good. That was very nice to watch, man. I honestly thought it would be a little bit more defensive gameplay, but I'm very glad that both teams decided to play a little bit more aggressive in the end. And yeah, Geek Fan completely reverse sweeping. That was crazy, man. We don't really see that often. We have MVP, this GF Rumpel. Definitely someone to look out for, man. The jungler, just so many MVPs going to him throughout the whole series. Just such a good player. Always there, always engaging. Um, super well followed up by his team, though, of course, as well. And we can see the damage. 24k by the misfortune, 29,000 by that Oriana, very well done. However, not enough to carry the team. With that being said, we are finally done with the SEA Icon Series Malaysia preseason. Okay, the champion has been crowned, it is a geek fan, and we will finally be able to move on to more recent esports. Now, that is something I'm very excited to check out. And of course, it's going to be on that new Wild Rift patch 2.2. It should be super cool. And as always, make sure to subscribe and ring the notification bell if you don't want to miss that upcoming Wild Rift esports content on this channel. And I really hope you guys enjoyed. With that being said, peace.